Welcome to 996 of Hell for the uninitiated. This is an unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything. Arizona Coyotes, butts unclenched. Oliver Eichmann Larson stays in the desert. What a hellish two weeks just reading rumors after rumors, refreshing all of the media uh, just to find out that Oliver Eichmann Larson stays and a lot, a lot of communication coming out with that stance by Oliver Ekman Larson. First of all, I want to thank the new GM and Bill Armstrong. I mean, he did not undersell Oliver Ekman Larson. He didn't like the offers made by Vancouver or Boston, even under pressure by ownership who did not like the contract of OEL. They like him as a person. They just really cannot take the salary OEL's making this season and next season for sure. So I think his bonuses increase his salary from eight million or whatever eight million it is to about ten million just in salary, not in cap hit for the next two seasons. So obviously ownership wanted to try and move him, save some money in these current times. GMBA looked around and didn't like what he was getting, and he said regarding this whole situation that his job is to move this team forward and put the best team forward. And he felt like what he was being offered didn't do that, so he stuck to his guns. And I'm liking this guy every, you know, every time this guy opens up his mouth, uh, I, I'm liking it. Um, sure, he hasn't made a trade yet, so I'm going to reserve some judgment. But today, uh, yesterday, in the first day of free agency, he signed two guys in Tyler Pitlick and John Hayden, not to be confused with Barrett Hayton, who is um, the Coyotes' future centerman so he got two huge guys if you're hoping for the coyotes to get a big free agent name uh, i'm not sure where your head's at um, i knew going in he'd get some depth guys and he said and even in my previous video before free agency i said uh the general manager and bill armstrong said he wanted to be like a cactus when teams come into the desert they want to be prickled they want to be scared they want to be intimidated and these two signings did exactly that. You got Pillick, who's 6'2", 200 pounds, and Hayden, who's 6'3", 215 pounds. Some big boys, younger boys. I, I think they're about each 28 years old, maybe. They were drafted earlier in the, in the past decade. But big bodies, who's going to lay the hit, who play with competitive edge, who uh, go against the boards, who, who play on that edge, who go hard for the puck. They're hard-nosed players. And they played for the team on their on their chest, and that's exactly what uh, Bill Armstrong wanted in this team. And it's starting to make sense. Everything's starting to you know fold and come together like a puzzle piece. They don't want Vinny Hinnestroza, who signed with Florida for only a million dollars. So I mean, the Coyotes could have afforded that. They signed both these guys for around a mil. So they could have aff afforded Hinnestroza. They wanted to walk away from him. Vinny only had 51 hits last season. We'll get to all the hits later. So Vinny, they walked away from. They walked away from Michael Grabner. They bought him out. So they go for bigger size guys who lay hits, who intimidate teams, who play on an edge, who keep the team competitive, who generate energy for their team in Hayden and Pitlick. So we look at hits. So Pitlick had 132 hits last season. Hayden had 87 hits. So who on the Coyotes hit a lot? Well, you'd be surprised. The biggest hitter is actually one of a skilled guy. It's Lawson Krause. He's not skilled like Keller and Kessel, Schmaltz, and Garland. But, you know, Krause could put pucks in the net. And he led a team with 201 hits on the forward side. When we're talking about forwards here. 201 hits. Fisher, they qualified Fisher. Fisher has yet to sign, but he had 140 hits. So our big hitters are Krause and Fisher. And Krause and Fisher are still on the team. Our, one of our lowest hitters who walked away, Grabner. Who, ha who plays on the third and fourth line, who is constantly scratched, 21 hits. And Vinny Hinnestros, who found himself scratched a lot of times, 51 hits. Richardson, 77 hits. Soderberg, 77 hits. So we think Soderberg, with a huge body, big frame, would you know have around the same amount of hits as Fisher and Kraus. Uh, no, he's more like a gentle giant, like we all know Martin Hansel was. So Richardson who's a smaller statured player, had the same amount of hits as the monster in Soderberg. So I'm, I'm obviously the Cowboys are going to walk away from Soderberg. We'll see what happens with Richardson, if they could bring him back on a cheap deal. 
But if it's very telling that Richardson had the same number of hits as Soderberg, and it's telling that the Cowboys walk away from Gradner and Vinny Henestrosa, who are depth players but don't hit. So it's pretty much what Talkin has been saying. You know, if he wants to put out his energy line, which he always does, he always has a line to generate energy. In the playoffs, it was Kraus, Soderberg, and Fisher. But if Soderberg's not hitting, and if he wants to play a fourth line guy of his four, if he wants to play his fourth line, which has Hennis Rose and Grabner on it, uh, they're not hitting. They they play a speedy, straightforward style. So I think Talkin wants to talk it, and Bill Armstrong want to get away from that. They want their bottom six to hit and generate energy. They have guys who could score and who need to score: Schmaltz, Garland, Keller, Dvorak, Kessel. Hayden, they those guys are the scorers. They need to score. The bottom six need to set the tone and set the energy. I and I know this sounds kind of outdated, but look at the Stanley Cup finalists, Tampa Bay. They went out and got Patrick Maroon when they got swept by the Columbus Blue Jackets. And they have Cedric Paquette on that fourth line as well. And Barkley Goodrow. They went out and acquired Goodrow too. You look at that playoff, that fourth line or third line with Goodrow, Bar- uh, Maroon, and Paquette, they set the tone. They generated chances. Even Blake Coleman, hard-nosed guy, goes into the corners, goes into the boards. These are competitive guys who play on an edge, not an edge like Zach Ronaldo, just like they have a presence. They intimidate you. They play hard with their bodies. And those are guys that Bill Armstrong wants in his team. And I think Talkett has wanted on his team for a long time. And you look at the Dallas Stars, too. I mean, they had a lot of grit on their team, a lot of big bodies. They were a hard-hitting team. Uh, they managed to beat the Avalanche through outscoring them because the Avalanche had bad goaltending due to injuries. But they were a hard, you know, f- a hard-fought team who were physically outmatching the Avalanche. And they went toe-to-toe with Vegas. And we all know Vegas has Reeves and a bunch of those gritty guys, too. So... I think uh, this is where NHL is going. I think teams like the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, they, they haven't found success. Their bottom six aren't hard-nosed, checking, gritty players. And they went on and got Wayne Simmons. So we'll see how that turns out. Uh, Kyle Clifford didn't work out for them. We'll see how Wayne Simmons works out. But I think teams need to structure themselves as having the top six be scorers. Yes, we're going to a smaller, speedy type of game. But your bottom six still needs to create energy, still needs to intimidate, guys. You can't get thrown around like in that Colorado Avalanche series where Nathan McKinnon was throwing around Christian Fisher and no one was there to intimidate McKinnon because our enforcers were just Fisher and Kraus. And Kraus, we need his hands for pocketing a goal here and there. And Fisher, he's more of a gentle giant, but he hits more than Soderberg and Hansel. But a Fisher needs help, and hopefully Hayden and Pitlick could uh, help out Fisher and intimidate more guys and keep the guys on the bench in the game and energize and and that's what I was you know complaining about after that avalanche series the moment this this Coyotes team hits adversity uh, they just give up and they're flat where if you put in guys like Hayden and Pitlick they're not there to score don't hope these guys are going to score they're there to intimidate they're there to hit legally and cleanly they're there to play with competitiveness and to just make it hard for the opposition. Even if you're going to get outmatched like Dallas was in the finals, they only lost games, you know, 2-0, two, two a 3-1, a 4-1. It wasn't blowouts like 7-1 every game. They remained competitive. Yes, they relied on Kudobin, but um, their energy and their grit managed to keep them in the game. And our goal scorers need to be our goal scorers and our bottom six just needs to hit hard, play competitive, and be intimidating to play against. So, Bill Armstrong said his job today was to get puzzle pieces to fit the puzzle. So that infers to me that he likes the puzzle they have. They have their top six, even though Kessel's a bit disappointing. Maybe we'll see, you know, a, a switch. Kessel moves out. They they sign, you know, another score in his place who actually scores. But um, I don't think this. I don't think Bill Armstrong is going in the direction of tearing everything down. They have a puzzle. They're fitting in pieces. they got to be hard to play against. They have to be competitive through, for 60 minutes. They can't have lulls for 5 to 10 minutes with the Coyotes. 
are success susceptible of doing game in and game out. I'm sure Talk is going to love these guys. They're sticky guys who play the body, which he wanted. You can't have four lines of just speedy young guys of skill. Gradner and Hinnestrosa, their game was more geared towards skill and not being gritty. Richardson kind of does both. We'll see if they could sign him. Richardson plays a hard game too. He's competitive, but uh, he, he could also pot in some goals. So we'll see. I was hoping the Cowboys would bring back Nick Cousins, but he signed with Nashville. They're missing a fourth line center. That's one of the gaps I see right now, barring any trades. They still need to fill in that fourth center role. I'm not confident in Shapu moving up from the Roadrunners to fill in that role. So I'm hoping Richardson signs a cheap deal short term with the Coyotes because he fits the bill and he earned it. So I hope they bring him, bring him back. But we'll see how free agency still rolls out. You know, Taylor Hall still looking for a team at the time of making this video. Um, I think the OEL trade is over, even though Bruins have lost Tory Krug and the Canucks have lost Brandon Tanev. I'm sure they're kicking themselves, not making that all of Reichman Larson play. But, you know, maybe both teams will go out and get Petrangelo or Tyson Berry. Um, they need to fill in that defensive gap. So we'll see how the Bruins and Canucks address those issues. And like I said, Taylor Hall still looking for a team. Maybe Columbus, Colorado, or even Boston have shown interest. So we'll see. Um, liking these depth signings, I wasn't expecting much. I just wanted signings to tell me where the GM's head is at. And so I think these trade, these signings signal the direction he's going in. And uh, it makes me feel comfortable with ge this general manager. And we'll see. I'm still waiting for his first trade to just tell me more of the conversations he's having behind the scenes because the fan base is kind of, you know, shut out of that. So uh, we'll see. We'll sit and wait to see what happens. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching and thank you for your support.